What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So Samsung sells a lot of phones. And if you're trying to decide on a new one right now, it probably feels a bit overwhelming. To help with that, I'm gonna give you my picks for the best Samsung phones to buy right now as we sort of kick off 2024 at pretty much every price point. And yeah, I know Samsung just announced their new S24s. Those are great phones, of course, but these phones I'm gonna talk about here are the ones you can get at a discount that have been out for a while. I'm of the opinion that a vast majority of people don't actually need the newest, latest, and greatest devices anyway. There's just so much value in getting last year's phones, especially since smartphones now are being supported for years and years too. If you're interested in doing some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave links to all these phones that I talk about down below in the video description at their cheapest current prices, so you can take advantage of any of the deals I mention. But the gist of this video is pretty simple. If you browse Amazon, Swappa, eBay, Plug Tech, and any other third-party retailer, you're gonna find used and renewed devices for often Sometimes 30% or more off their original price. And while those buy one, get one carrier deals on brand new smartphones, I'm sure are pretty enticing, shopping for a new to you smartphone that's a couple of years old is oftentimes the smarter decision and can save you way more money in the long run. The cheapest or most budget friendly Samsung smartphone you should consider right now is the A14 5G. This was one of the top selling smartphones overall last year. And with the new A15 5G just announced, announced, that makes last year's A14 an even better deal. You can find this phone for well under $200 unlocked, and most carriers and prepaid networks actually offer it for free with a service contract. It's widely available here in the US on all the major networks and around the world. And just because it's a budget phone, and in fact one of Samsung's most affordable options overall, that doesn't mean it's lacking in any specs or major features. For a vast majority of people who use their smartphones for the casual stuff, YouTube video watching, Facebook Facebook scrolling, texting, Google Maps, all the stuff like that, this phone is going to be perfectly fine. Samsung updated the design of their A-series phones last year to essentially mimic the flagship S-series. So at a glance, this phone looks like a higher-end device, and it has decent specs too. A big 6.6-inch 90Hz refresh rate display, plenty powerful processor powering it, a micro SD card slot, so it doesn't matter if you get the 64 gigabyte model, you can double or triple the storage for cheap, which is really nice. It even has a 50 megapixel main camera around back, and out of every Everything on these budget phones, the picture and video quality is probably what's been most improved over the last few years. Best of all, even though the A14 5G just celebrated its first birthday, you can still expect three more years of major Android updates to hit this phone. So it'll continue to feel current with the latest software. And that's one thing in particular that Samsung now offers with these budget phones that finally makes them not just a good buy in the moment, but sort of a good long-term investment in a way too. Samsung's budget phones are really, really good nowadays, and for under 200 bucks, the A14 5G checks all the boxes most people would need for their daily smartphone usage. By the way, Keep Solid's Mono Defense Bundle, this video's sponsor, is one of the first things I always install on all of my devices. Mono Defense is a comprehensive five-app cybersecurity bundle that aims to keep your online identity and all your personal information safe. The Mono Defense apps can be installed on up to five different devices, including your Android smartphone, your iPhone, laptop, tablet, and more. VPN on Limited is your first line of defense for staying safe on public and at-home Wi-Fi networks. With 256-bit AES encryption, VPN Unlimited makes it almost impossible for anyone to try and steal passwords, credit cards, and other sensitive data via the Wi-Fi. Passwarden allows you to store, manage, and autofill account email and passwords, credit card numbers, ID cards, and more. It can generate super secure passwords for you, let you know when one of your own might be compromised, and with duress mode, you can further hide your most sensitive information in a separate vault with a separate password. To give yourself one more layer of protection if you're ever in a situation where officials or law enforcement demand access. You can block malware and filter malicious traffic with DNS firewall, access and stream all the major streaming services anywhere in the world with smart DNS, and you can further protect your online accounts with Authenticator, a 2FA tool that prompts you with a uniquely generated code to serve as one more login security check. Keep Solid's Mono Defense Bundle is available in monthly, yearly, and lifetime packages, and they continue to offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's never been a better time to try them out. Check out Keep Solid
Solid's Mono Defense Bundle at the link in the video description below. If instead you'd rather have something with more features and more powerful specs, but still don't want to pay flagship prices, then the A54 5G is probably what you'd need. Samsung's A50 something devices have, in my opinion, pioneered the mid range smartphone space. And from the A52 onward, these have been some of the best bang for your buck smartphones to buy year after year. The A54 in particular was, in my opinion, the phone of the year last year. It's seriously like 90% as good as an S23 for a fraction of the price. And what you don't get with a phone like this are basically those over the top sort of gimmicky flagship features that you probably wouldn't use otherwise, and are usually what prompts the sky high price points of the flagship phones. $449 is the price you'd pay for the A54 right now brand new, but since this phone has been out for a while too, you can find renewed listings for like 300 bucks, and there's plenty of carrier deals on this phone as well. The A54 rocks a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED 120 hertz display, and if those specs sound familiar, it's because that's basically what you get with the flagship S23 smartphone. On top of that, it's a premium all glass build that looks and feels flagship caliper. It's powered by Samsung's in-house Exynos 1380 processor, which is maybe the only thing that isn't as good as a flagship Snapdragon chip. But for most people who use their phone for the regular everyday stuff, texting, web browsing, social media, scrolling, picture taking, it's going to be perfectly fine. And speaking of pictures, this phone's 50 megapixel main lens and 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. It has a five megapixel macro too, but that's not important. Both allow you to take great looking pictures and videos that aren't far off from Samsung's highly touted flagship cameras. I always like to say that the A54 is the phone that a vast majority of people should opt for. The small little things this phone doesn't have versus a flagship phone aren't going to be missed, and what you save in dollars in your pocket makes it totally worth it. Speaking of not quite flagship phones, I want to just briefly talk about the S23 FE that came out a month ago. Now, this is a phone from Samsung's Fan Edition line that, if you remember, originally started with the S20 FE, which was literally the greatest Samsung phone ever made. The S21 FE is a phone that I think Samsung wants you to forget, more on that in a moment. They skipped the S22 FE entirely, and now they're back with the S23 FE. The issue with this phone is that it came out a few months too late for people to get excited about it. The FE series is sort of stuck on this bizarre release cycle, where it launches just before the new flagship phones versus a nice midsummer launch like the original S20 FE had. And because of all this, you can literally get a flagship S23 or S23 Plus for cheaper than the new S23 FE. Seriously, especially since the new S24s are out now, the flagship S23s are even cheaper than they were just a few weeks ago. That leaves this $600 relatively new S23 FE as sort of the odd man out. The FE needs to be a great mid-cycle summer release that reminds people about Samsung. It needs to have those fun, funky colors it used to have, maybe a special feature or two, and it also needs to be like $50 cheaper. But I suppose if all those things were true, there may not be a need for like the A54, for example. So I don't know, maybe just make less phones in general. Okay, so let me finish off my FE rants by talking about the S21 FE, because there's something really bizarre happening with this phone. The S21 FE, you might remember, was delayed, rumored to be canceled completely, and then quietly released like a week before the flagship S22s came out a couple of years ago, there was like no fanfare for this phone, no interest. And as time went on, it felt like less and less people bought this phone or even knew it existed. Because of that, if you go on Amazon right now, you can get an S21 FE brand new for like $290 or renewed for under $240. That's insane. The S21 FE was originally $699. The thing is, the S21 FE is not a bad phone at all. In fact, it's closer to the flagship S21 than the new S23 FE is to its flagship namesake. I originally wasn't even going to mention the S21 FE because I figured getting a used flagship S21 would obviously be the better buy, but when I found out how cheap this phone was, I just couldn't ignore it. The S21 FE might just be the best overall deal on this list, like a sleeper pick that no one would ever think about buying, but I truly feel as though now is this phone's time to shine. The S21 FE is a steal of a deal if you want basically an almost flagship phone for pennies on the dollar. Now, if you want to talk depreciation, 
The S21 Ultra is a phone that was like $1,100 when it first came out, but now you can snag one for well under 400 bucks. And for nearly a third the price, you still get a phone that's better than any other current sub $500 device and one that looks a lot nicer than most current phones too. It also has a better resolution than most of the current phones if you can believe that. 3200 by 1440, 6.8 inch AMOLED 120 hertz panel that's plenty bright. It has a massive 5000 milliamp battery to power it, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 8K video recording. It's an absolute powerhouse. And if we're being honest, I think Samsung sort of peaked with their S21 line, and the S21 Ultra was absolute S tier. What's also nice is that not only does this phone get Android 14, but it still has one more major Android update in the pipeline. So it'll feel fresh and current for at least another year and a half, almost two years. It's sort of a long-term investment play in a way. This is probably the phone I would get out of everything else on the list. And while it's still not maybe cheap, you can't deny the fact that getting this phone at this price point is a crazy good deal. So there's two phones I wanna give honorable mention to the Samsung A73 and the A72. Now the A73 should come as no surprise. This was the highest end A series phone a couple of years ago. And while Samsung didn't offer an A74 last year, this A73 is still a darn good phone. One of the reasons for that is it was one of the first to get Android 14 and spec wise, it's actually not far off from the current A54 or even a couple year old flagship device. Some people might even suggest the Snapdragon 778G chipset inside this phone is better than the upper tier Exynos processors. And with its massive Super AMOLED 120 Hertz display and 108 megapixel camera, it's pretty much the full package when it comes to the specs. The main problem with this phone is it wasn't really released in the US, so it's kind of difficult to get, but for the rest of the world, you guys have yourself a great device. The A72 is obviously one more year older, and this phone for its time really set the precedent for mid-range Samsung devices being so good. The perk of this phone is the fact that it too already received the Android 14 update, and while it maybe doesn't have the most current specs by comparison, the fact that it still feels new and current right now with the software gives it an extra point. Again, not really a device that hit the US market, unfortunately, but a great buy nonetheless if it's available in your region. If you're curious about some phones you should avoid, well, I'll give you two thoughts on that. First, anything from Samsung's A0 line, like the A04s or A03s, even for under 200 bucks, and in some cases under 100 bucks, those phones just have way too many compromises to be decent for daily use. They're a hard pass for sure. And in fact, these phones are some of the only ones I've ever specifically not recommended, no matter how cheap you can still buy them for. For day-to-day -day use, they're just too slow and too clunky. And some of them don't even run the full version of Android. Also, one of the A0 phones Samsung sold new last year literally had a micro USB port for charging, which is just crazy. The other thing to consider is that while Samsung has definitely improved and expanded their major Android update support, a lot of great devices like the flagship S20s and older A-series fan favorites like the A21 and A51 are no longer getting major updates. That's a bit of a bummer. And I know not everyone cares about major Android updates right now. A lot of these phones may still get regular security patches from time to time, which is important, but I feel like you should still opt for a phone that's at least current within one year of whatever version of Android is out. Fortunately, if that's your criteria, there's still about 10 million Samsung phones to choose from, it seems like. And if you just have to have a new high-end phone right now, Samsung's new seven-year update policy for its flagships and likely its new higher tier A-series phones when those get released is a great justification for spending a little more money. Overall, smartphones really haven't changed a ton the last three or four years. So in my opinion, it makes a ton of sense to sort of be a year or two behind on the release cycles and either buy something used or keep what you already have for a bit longer. But what do you guys think? Which Samsung phone do you think is the best option to buy right now? Was there one that I maybe missed that you would recommend yourself, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.